The police found Sherry Papini on Thanksgiving Day 2016 wrapped in chains and covered in bruises while walking on a country road hundreds of miles from her home in Shasta County, California. They quickly brought her to the station. Then, Papini told them a story straight out of a cheesy crime thriller. Papini went missing on November 2nd. She told the cops how that morning she'd gone jogging in Redding, California when she was suddenly attacked. Papini claims two masked criminals kidnapped her while she was jogging. According to Papini, they threatened her with weapons and ordered her to go with them. When she arrived at the station on Thanksgiving, Papini sat down with a sketch artist. She described each kidnapper vividly. Papini told police the kidnappers were two Hispanic women wearing bandanas over their mouths as a disguise. The police, though dumbfounded, believed Papini. They'd been looking for her for 22 days and were glad to have solved this case. For 22 days, no one had a clue where she was, not even her husband Keith. The good citizens of Reading spent countless hours helping the scared husband been look for his wife. They worked together to put up signs and posters while searching every square foot of Shasta County looking for Papini. When she finally turned up 22 days later, the community went through a genuine roller coaster of emotion. Papini, by all appearances, was a super mom. She regularly posted photos with her beloved husband Keith on social media. Sherry was also raising two kids while managing her family's household. She was the quintessential blonde suburban super mom. The locals were shocked that someone like Papini could go missing in a quiet town like theirs. They also wanted to help the family she left behind. When Papini was at last reunited with her family, the town celebrated alongside them. Eventually, however, the excitement wore off, and the town realized something quite unsettling. Two kidnappers were still on the loose. Shasta County Sheriff Michael L. Johnson told the media the first few years after Papini's return were scary times. He says that Shasta County wasn't prepared for something like this. In fact, he described the community as safe, quiet, unassuming, and tight-knit. If something happens to someone, the whole town hears about it and acts accordingly. Johnson recalls how the people of Shasta hid in their homes, stopped jogging, and stayed home instead of going out at night. Shasta County residents were afraid of being kidnapped. Their fears were fueled by rumors of traffickers and abductors in the area. Still, there was no evidence to support that kind of activity, nothing but Sherry's story. Nevertheless, they had all seen Papini wrapped in chains, head shaved, covered in bruises, dirt, and grime. The police also reported that Papini's ankles were restrained with hose clamps. They presumed the kidnappers put the hose clamps on on Papini to keep her in their lair. They must have gone to great lengths to scare and hurt poor Papini. Those images stuck with them for several years. So did the vivid police sketches Papini described to the artist, meaning these two women had to be real. They might return to Shasta County for another victim. Meanwhile, Papini was back to being a mom again. Thanks to her alleged kidnappers, she was also $30,000 richer. California has what they call a kidnapping compensation program. The compensatory payments are issued by the California Victims Compensation Board. Kidnapping victims often lose months or even years of their lives. On top of that, victims are usually burdened with medical bills that cover treating injuries they may have sustained and or therapy. The Compensation Board likes to help alleviate those burdens in any way they can. In 2010, the board awarded J.C. Dugard $20 million after she was kidnapped and held in captivity for 20 years. In other words, Dugard received $1 million for each year that was stolen from her, a compensation rate she more than deserved. But there's a catch, even for victims like Dugard. If you want kidnapping compensation, then you have to apply for it. The board ultimately decides whether or not you need compensation from the state. Papini applied for a settlement as soon as she got home. As mentioned earlier, Papini received $30,000 for 22 days. She used the check to pay for PTSD therapy sessions and the ambulance that brought her to the hospital when she escaped. The compensation board gladly awarded the settlement, despite there being no evidence that anyone kidnapped her. A fact many investigators in Shasta found odd. County authorities, local police department, and even the FBI helped investigate Papini's alleged kidnapping. Still, they found no empirical evidence to back up her story. They never found the two Hispanic women wearing bandanas. They also couldn't find any evidence at the site of the kidnapping. There were no witnesses and no items left behind. All the investigators had was Papini's testimony, her injuries, the chains, and the hose clamps. They searched five years before finding anything substantial, though it wasn't what they or anyone else expected. In early March of 2022, the United States Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of California announced they were arresting Papini on fraud charges. They said investigators found evidence that contradicted her original kidnapping story. The police 
police, alongside a team of FBI investigators, discovered where Papini had disappeared on November 2nd, 2016, Costa Mesa, California. Costa Mesa is a suburban paradise nestled in Orange County, about 600 miles away from Redding. So what was Papini doing that far away from her family? The investigators determined that Papini traveled to Costa Mesa to be with her ex-boyfriend, not because two Hispanic women held her at gunpoint. While everyone in California was looking for her, Papini was in sunny Costa Mesa with her ex. The Shasta County and Redding Police Departments were outraged. They'd been searching for Papini's abductors for nearly six years for nothing. Sheriff Johnson called Papini selfish, callous, and unsympathetic to all the pain she caused. He particularly called her out for the fear she injected into Redding and surrounding towns. He says that countless public and private resources were spent trying to find her and keep her safe and healthy. And that's not including her $30,000 settlement. Sheriff Johnson went on to say how happy he was that someone who caused the town so much suffering is now facing justice. When Sherry went missing, the first person the police interrogated was her husband, Keith. Everyone knows the husband is always the first suspect in any investigation. However, it didn't take the police long to figure out Keith was innocent. He breezed through a lie detector test and had an alibi. The police dismissed him as a suspect and kept looking. They didn't find anything for several days until Papini mysteriously emerged. Police collected evidence off Papini when they found her. They wanted to see if they could find some DNA on her to match with the suspects. They were expecting to find the DNA of at least one Hispanic female suspect. Instead, they got a match for someone already in their system, someone who was definitely not a Hispanic woman. The DNA belonged to Papini's ex-boyfriend, someone the police never considered. They immediately sent officers and agents to Orange County to look for him. Since he wasn't trying to hide, they didn't have a hard time finding him. The investigators questioned Papini's ex, and he gave them the whole story. Papini had called him in early November, asking if he could drive up to Reading and pick her up. He asked why. She told him that Keith was always cruel to her, and the Reading police weren't doing anything about it. She didn't feel safe anymore. However, the LA Times found no records of Papini ever filing a complaint against Keith. Nevertheless, the ex believed her and drove up to Reading on November 2nd at her request. He picked her up and drove them 600 miles down to his home in Costa Mesa. She left behind her phone and her two children, who she was supposed to pick up from daycare after her morning jog. In fact, that's how Keith realized his wife was missing. Their kids were still at daycare when he got home from work that day. Meanwhile, Papini was with her ex. He says she stayed at his house for three weeks before asking to go to Reading just before Thanksgiving Day. The FBI found a witness who saw Papini walking freely around her ex's apartment. However, Papini's ex said the weeks they spent together were never romantic. Regardless, investigators had what they needed. They kept investigating the scam until they gathered enough evidence to prosecute Papini. That's when the attorney's office made the announcement. Up to that point, in March 2022, Papini was sticking to her kidnapping claim. Two years before, in 2020, Papini reiterated her story to FBI investigators. They already knew about the DNA evidence and wanted to give Papini the chance to come clean. She did not. They knew she was lying. In a couple of years, they'd make their move, and what a move it was. Papini's family was outraged after her arrest on March 3rd, 2022. They even released a statement. Police arrested Papini right in front of her two children. The family wrote that they were appalled by how the police ruthlessly ambushed Papini and cuffed her in front of everyone. The Papini family claimed their beloved Sherry would have complied with law enforcement and simply gone down to the station. Papini herself never corroborated their claim, however. The arrest was, nonetheless, humiliating. But not as humiliating as the truth. Papini's secret was out. Every little detail of it. Shasta County learned the news rather quickly. They could now rest a little easier knowing there aren't any abductors or traffickers in town. Reading residents also learned the twisted ways Papini made her 22-day vacation look like a kidnapping. Her ex-boyfriend told police that Papini asked him to help her look kidnapped. She shaved her head, scratched herself, and made some burn marks while the ex did the rest. According to her ex, Papini asked him to shoot her in the leg with a hockey puck. He did what she asked. Once satisfied with the number of bruises, she asked him to brand her. Papini's ex says he heated up a wood-burning tool and obeyed her command. She wanted her appearance to look convincing, convincing enough for the cops and compensation board anyway, in which she definitely succeeded. The citizens of Reading believed her for five years. Now, they get to watch Papini suffer for her twisted actions. After her arrest, the authorities revealed her charges and potential sentencing options. They didn't sound too good for Papini. Papini was charged with making false statements to a federal law enforcement officer and mail fraud. The false statement charge only carries a maximum of five years, which usually means a two-year sentence, which is often shortened on good behavior. The mail fraud charge, however, wields a 20-year maximum sentence. 
evidence. Papini committed mail fraud when she applied for a kidnapping compensation settlement and testified before the board that she'd been kidnapped. She's going to have a difficult time disproving that charge. The prosecutors are also fining Papini $250,000 for each charge. If the judge agrees, Papini will go from earning 30000 bucks to being half a million in debt. Click here to watch one of these next videos. And let us know in the comments section what you think the minimum punishment should be for lying about a serious crime that never happened.